Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to create measured lines. So here's an example of a measured line that we know the beginning of the line is zero, and we walk this line counting our paces, and we know the end of the line is 240 steps. So we can measure this line in any increment now in terms of steps. So examples of measured lines might be mile markers on highway systems, kilometers for streams, reaches. So let's use the Create Fishnet tool to create a line feature class that is composed of four lines. And we'll make our fishnet width and length of 100 and it'll be one square. So our cell width is a width of 100, our height is 100, and we have one row and one column, and we're creating polylines. So ne next, let's add a field so we can name our lines, and it'll be a text field, and it'll be 16 characters maximum width size. So we can add a field. So under Table Options, Add Field, it'll be a text, and let's just call it name. And the length will be 16 characters maximum. So next, let's use the Select Features tool to select two lines. So if we hold the Shift key down, we can select them individually. So these two lines, let's name this Moose Lane. So if we right mouse click Field Calculator, double quote Moose Lane. And then we can switch our selection. So switch selection. So these two lines, we'll name them Caribou Lane. So each line has a length that ArcMap can calculate from the X, Y coordinates, the beginning node and ending node of each line. So in this example, the length is 100. Let's assume that these are roads, and if we start at each road and walk them and count our number of paces, let's assume that it takes 120 paces or 120 steps to travel from the beginning of each line to the end of each line. So what we could do is we'll add a field for steps and then calculate the length of every line in steps is 120 steps. So next what we want to do is for each different name line, measure it in steps. So for example, for Moose Lane, if we started walking, it would be to 120 steps to this corner, and then we keep walking 200 steps, and we would end up at 240 steps at the end of Moose Lane. So the tool to do this is create routes. So route is another name for a measured line. Our input will be our four lines and our output. I named a new line feature class. I named it lines measured in steps. So since we want our lines measured in steps, if we left it at length, it would measure each line just based on its length. That's not what we want. What we want to do is measure it using a field, and then what field? So we're going to use the field name steps, where we walked each line and recorded the number of paces. So for each line, it took us 120 steps. So one field, and then that one field is steps. We might have, in some cases, two fields. So for example, you could have two fields then you would have a field saying what the starting measure is and what the ending measure is at each line. So mile markers on a highway system, for example. In this example, it's just one field. And then where do we want to start our zero steps? So we are starting our zero steps at the lower left. So start at the lower left and go out and accumulate steps as you progress out based on for each line that has a different name. So if we didn't give it this, it wouldn't know we have actually two roads. We've got Moose Lane and Caribou Lane. 
So the output looks identical, but if we open up the attribute table, you notice the shape now is polyline M. So we started with the shape being polyline, polyline M, the M means this line is measured. And there's actually two measured lines. So this measured line represents caribou lane, and this measure line represents moose lane. So since our lines are measured, we can now hatch our lines in steps. So to do that, if you go to properties, there is going to be a new tab called hatches. So we're going to hatch the features in this layer. And let's give it a hatch interval of one and then a hatch definition. Let's put a marker every 25 steps. And then let's label at this location every 25 steps. Let's label and we'll add a suffix. So the suffix will be space steps. And then OK. Then let's do apply and see what it looks like. But before we do that, let's do this just for one of the two lanes. So under definition query, we can go name equals get unique values moose lane. And then apply. Then that is hatched every 25 steps moose lane. And if we turn off our original four lines, so we'll just say OK. So there is Moose Lane measured every 25 steps. This is sometimes called dynamic segmentation because we dynamically segment the line. So for example, if you don't like to place every 25, you can dynamically segment it every 50, and boom, we have hatching every 50. If you want to put every 10, we would just change our to 10. And let's not label them. And boom, you've got hatches every 10 steps. So let's change it to line. If you do it by line, you have to specify what the width of the line should be. So let's do a width of 10. And our hatch orientation, it will be centered across. And then let's see what that looks like. And then we're going to hatch every 50 intervals. So now we've got a line and our measured line, let's make it red. So let's say we want our hatches to be red also. So I'm going to get rid of my original line. So then we would choose this symbol and then choose the same symbology for our hatches. And then if we want our measures to be also in red, we would go to label settings, add a suffix. And then under symbology, choose a color. So we'll use a red color, bold italics. So then our labels are in red also. So as a reminder, if you have a measured line, it will always have a shape named polyline M. And we use the Create Routes tool to make our measured line from a standard polyline feature class.